I'm at a place on a base that's for NASA, and I'm testing the next generation of habitats, which are gonna let us build a platform in space that's gonna benefit life on Earth. Now, when you launch in space, you gotta have a destination. We build the destination. The Life Habitat provides the volume for the astronauts to really reside in and live and sleep and have recreation, do their science, kind of live inside the Life Habitat. If you think about what it costs to launch a habitat, you wanna get the biggest bang for your buck, right? You want a small when you launch, large when you deploy. That's what Soft Goods brings to the table. We launch these soft goods packed, soft around a hard shell, which is our core structure. So you might pack it to 40 or 50 cubic meters of volume. When we launch it in space, we inflate it, it goes to 300 cubic meters. So your mass of volume launch is really impactful. So Life Habitat, we launch a single habitat, we get one third the size of the International Space Station. But that's the Life Habitat. We have habitat designs in our product evolution line that we could launch in a single launch and be the exact same size of the International Space Station. The technology is limitless. When you link this to what we have to do for space exploration. So we've been talking a lot about low Earth orbit, so up near the International Space Station. We're developing product lines with service cislunar, and then we also have technology which supports us on the lunar surface, and then technology which brings it to deep space. When you talk about deep space, it's long duration missions, over a year. This is the first time Sierra Space has ever tried to put a metallic plate in this inflatable habitat. Why a blanket plate? Because that's where you put a window in. What better window in this entire world than if you're up in space and you look down at Earth? The whole idea of this plate is to create a rigid point in a soft structure that can be used to mount anything to, like a window or an airlock or docking mechanism, birthing mechanism, grapple hooks, robotic arm, solar arrays, radiators, you name it, you can attach anything to this plate. The misconception is soft goods is soft. Soft goods has two modes, non-pressurized and pressurized. Non-pressurized, it's just a, it's a textile. It's whatever type of material it's being made out of. Under pressure, it's a rigid structure and it's stronger than steel. The ultimate goal from this burst test is to meet or beat the values that we met on previous burst tests. This is the historic landmark at the NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, where stages for the Apollo rocket were tested. This allowed us to take human beings to the moon for the first time. It's really fitting that we see Space are now using these same test stands to create the new orbital age. So today's test is one in a series that allows us to take the journey, put our life habitat in low Earth orbit. In order to certify habitats to be in space, there's a series of gates that you have to pass. That first gate is ultimate burst pressure, UBP testing. What is an ultimate burst pressure? It's what the team loves to do. We take that subscale we maximum pressurize it and we make it explode, destroy it. We in the soft goods and the structural soft goods are pushing those boundaries of the materials for what NASA has a lot of experience with. And therefore we're doing all these tests to understand where it will ultimately fail and what our capabilities are. All of this testing, all of this development, what we might deem bringing it to failure is actually bringing it to success. We're failing to succeed. And that's critical in any program. And we're gonna to continue to do it because we wanna make sure our product lines are robust and they're safe. You'll note in the cylinder section, so where the blanking plate is, is kind of that flat section in the middle of the test article, that will have white paint and black dots. The dots are primarily to allow us to test and measure the elongation of the webbings. There are cameras around the test article during the test that will be specifically calibrated to see how they move throughout the test. It's especially important on the other side where we have the blanking plate and you're integrating with this theoretically infinitely stiff structure into your soft goods and so you want to know how those loads distribute around the blanking plate and adjacent to the straps coming in. All of these tests give us data and that data supports going into the full scale. This is tough, it's hard. It's, it takes dedication. But when you see things like this and we land at this test site and we start to do a burst test, it's all worth it. And then right when we're done with this burst test, we move straight into the next design. Why? Because this inspires us. 200, 200. Woo! Woo!
absolutely amazing performance. The team did a fantastic job. I also did over Sierra Space, NASA. We were expecting somewhere in the low 200s, you know, to get it 240, almost 250. is an amazing performance. That's a 20% increase from our previous article. So this is fantastic going into our first full-scale design. Later this year, we're gonna do a full-scale test and we're gonna add two plates into that one. And that's, uh, as the product line evolves, the life habitat's gonna be getting growing bigger. We're gonna be adding bigger plates and we're gonna be adding more of them. We are a complete ecosystem. You've got transportation, which is going to take you to space. You've got destinations, which is going to allow you to live in space. And then you've got applications, which develops the hardware that maintains the environment so you can survive in space. You know, the next three, four years, we're going to put something in space. That's our goal.